Hey, what's going on, y'all? So for this video, this basically is just gonna be basically about just how to cast out the demon. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, in this time and age, there's so many people around this world that's walking around dealing with so many demons in their life. You know what I'm saying? And I remember the day when the Lord called me and um, he spoke to me about, you know, he he's calling me to do deliverance. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to uh, help deliver his people. And you know, obviously Jesus is the one that set the captives free. Jesus is the one that set the prisoners free, bro. He uses his people to do deliverance. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in Mark 16, it's Mark 16, 17, it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink and any drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, and the Bible lets us know that when it comes to uh, doing deliverance, casting out demons, it's based off faith. You do this as an act of faith. Um, even Jesus, you know, when um, he casted out de uh, demons, he casted out devils out of people. It's, it's biblical to cast out demons. But I feel like it's not talked about anymore because I believe that uh, due to people just not having a lot of knowledge about it or maybe people might be scared by it. Um, or people just might not want to do it, you know what I'm saying? Just want to, some reason it's just not talked about enough, but, um, casting out demons is biblical, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I know there's so many people around the world today that's dealing with so many demons, whether it's, uh, depression. So many people today, they'll be like, oh, well, depression, if you go to like a doctor, they'll diagnose them and, uh, and, uh, have some type of diagnosis saying that you need like therapy and all this, but nah, they really need Jesus. They need, they need that, uh, a lot of people that are diagnosed with certain things, a lot of people that are dealing with certain things in their life, like anxiety and all that, it's a spirit behind it, and they need deliverance. And it's important to know how to cast out a demon. So for this video, I'm going to just talk about how to cast out a demon. You know what I'm saying? So I'll say the first step when it comes to doing deliverance and casting out a demon is just making sure that... um you're living a uh you're walking in holiness so any person that's trying to do deliverance and you want to be the mouthpiece and in, in doing the deliverance for somebody uh making sure you walk in a life of holiness uh we all fall short of the glory of god so we need the grace of god but it's important that uh that our life is clean in a sense of that uh we're walking in holiness uh and following jesus you know what i'm saying uh if you're double-minded if you are uh, still lukewarm, I would advise doing deliverance. You know what I'm saying? I think it'd be more important for anybody that's lukewarm or, or even just started the walk that it's important that they uh, they continue to eat and feed themselves with the word of God, uh, uh, the sincere uh, and um, the sincere milk of the word. You know what I'm saying? To to still learn about the gospel, still, um, you know, uh, learning about how to do this walk. You know what I'm saying? I think that's more important than doing deliverance if you first just in this walk and you just started to come to Christ, you know what I'm saying? But just you want to say the first step I just want to say is making sure that you uh you're not practicing sin, that uh the Holy Spirit is reigning in your life uh when it comes to uh doing deliverance. Second step I want to say is just making sure the person you do deliverance for, just making sure that they're comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like when I do deliverance for people, I always just tell them like you know this is an act of love you know what i'm saying this is an act of faith as well that i got faith that that jesus is going to set you free and also that i want to see you be free and more than all like god will speak to me about a lot of people what they're dealing with when i do deliverance and god telling me these things because he want them to be free from these things so i tell the person that like you know i want to see you free but more than all jesus want to see you free from all the things you're dealing with in your life and uh you know and I just want the person to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I let them know, like, let these people know when you do deliverance for them. Uh, if you're about to cast out a demon out of somebody, let them know, like, uh, you know, this is an act of love. Like, I want to see you be free. You could be comfortable. Um, I'm your brother in Christ. You know, I love you in Christ. And, uh, you know, I want to see you be free. And there's nothing to be afraid of, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to this process. So um, I think it's good just to also get to know that person, too. Um, it's, it's a sense of comfortability when you get to know somebody, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, uh, just talk to them for a second before you do the deliverance. So, uh, you want the person to be comfortable that you're doing deliverance for when you're about to cast out a demon out of them. So, uh, I say that's the second step. Third step, I say lead them through prayers of renouncing, read them through prayers of renouncing and repenting, um, breaking soul ties. They're dealing with unforgiveness, uh, whatever they're dealing with, just leading them in prayers of verbally uh, coming to the Lord and praying and saying, like, I'll say, for example, it's like, 
I'll be like, uh, the person would say, I renounce the spirit of fear. I renounce the spirit of, of unforgiveness. I renounce the spirit of anger or whatever they're dealing with. Um, you just kind of lead them through that. Because a lot of these people uh, that you might do deliverance for and try to cast out a demon out of them, um, they never did renouncing ever in their life. So um, it's important to lead them through renouncing. Uh, also, too, this is one of the most this is one of the most important steps because um, when they renounce what they're dealing with and they come to the Lord, they renounce it and they uh, ask for forgiveness and all these things. The devil got no legal rights in those areas in their life. So when a person if you try to deliver on somebody that doesn't renounce the things they're dealing with, the devil technically has legal rights over uh, over the uh, those areas in their life. So it's important to lead them through repentance and renouncing and uh, also confirming with the person, like, you know, like, do they want to go through this deliverance? Making sure there's something they want to do, you know what I'm saying? Because they got to be ready to uh, give up all those stuff that they're renouncing and to start walking a lifestyle following Jesus' footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Making sure they don't go back to the world. And um, it's important uh, that they don't go back to the world because uh, it talks about in the Bible in Matthew 12, 43 through 45, uh, it says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through dry places seeking rest and find none. Then he said, I will return into, into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he find it empty, swept and garnished. Then go he and take with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And there and in the, the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also when the wicked gener this gen th even also um even if um even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So basically, this verse is saying that um, say if you do deliverance for somebody and they go back into the world, you know what I'm saying? They go back to the things they was dealing with. They go back to the yoke of bondage. I remember in Galatians 5.1, it says, Be ye not entangled to the yoke of bondage you was once in. It's saying that because when someone gets delivered, and if someone goes back to that yoke of bondage, those same spirits that they was dealing with, they got delivered from, they will come back even stronger to attack that person's life. And it'll be even harder for that person to be delivered. So it's important before doing deliverance, letting that person know, making sure you want to be, that they want to be delivered and that they ready to walk in that lifestyle to follow Jesus' footsteps and walk a life of sanctification and to go through that process when it comes to following Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So, because if they don't, say if they get delivered and they go back to those things, those demons going to come back even stronger. You know what I'm saying? So for the third step, just saying, but, uh, making sure that person is, that they want to go through deliverance and that they're ready and they also ready to follow a lifestyle following jesus footsteps in his word you know what i'm saying and uh leading them to prayers of renouncing and repenting um uh, after you do that then you apply pressure on whatever demon they're going through so you just bind up that demon whether it's the save it's the spirit of anxiety you bind up that spirit of anxiety and you command it to leave that person in Jesus name it's important to do it all these things in Jesus name It's through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit that allow us when we do deliverance that people could be delivered because through the power of the Holy Spirit that's in us that's a, that give us that power that we could uh that we could uh um cast out devils that we could um uh, that we uh shall speak in new tongues that we if we lay hands over somebody that they be healed through the power of the Holy Spirit so it's important to bind up any demon they're dealing with, bind it up, command it to leave that person in Jesus' name. There's times where um, I'll be like, you know, I command that spirit of anxiety to uh, come out the belly and out through the mouth and go to the abyss in Jesus' name. So, yeah, it's important also to, to command that demon to go back to the abyss, to the bomber's pit of hell, or to the dry places, and then do this all in Jesus' name, because that's where the power comes from. So you apply pressure to that demon. And I also say, keep applying pressure, pressure, keep applying pressure to that demon. Sometimes you might not see a, a physical manifestation of that person, of them manifesting stuff like that. But I also want to say, too, just because someone might not be physically manifested doesn't mean you're actually uh, that you're not doing anything. Because in the spirit, when you binding up that demon and you com uh, you command it, it's important to command it. Don't ask it. Don't, you know, you have that power. Jesus gave us power to trade on serpents and scorpions so you could command that demon to leave that person in Jesus' name and command it to leave and go to the abyss or to the bombers pit of hell in Jesus' name. And keep applying pressure. But I want to say also what I was talking about, like, 
even though you might not see it, like they manifest and stuff like that in the spirit what's going on in the spirit is that you really fight it on this person's behalf that uh, that you're breaking chains, you know what I'm saying? So when I be praying too, I be like, I break every single chain in the spirit using the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God in Jesus' name. And you just breaking up these chains. So you might not, so don't be discouraged if you're doing deliverance on somebody, you casting out a demon, you don't see that person physically manifesting because uh, what's going on in the spirit, you could be, you actually really be breaking chains off that person's life, whether it's strongholds or principalities, whatever they're dealing with, you breaking that all up in Jesus' name. And also, what I want to say too, when it comes to deliverance, also, is uh, you know, uh, if uh, the number one thing in deliverance that's really helpful is listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. I, that is one of the most key thing. The Holy Spirit will guide you how to do the deliverance, how to cast out that demon out of that person. There was times before where I was doing deliverance for somebody and I was casting out a demon out of somebody, and literally, uh. I'm like, uh, I cast it out, uh, a lot of demons was cast out, but there was still certain things that person was dealing with that was there. And we was actually trying to cast out, uh, I was actually trying to cast out a, a, a Python, a Python spirit out of a person. And it's crazy because this to the point where this person, uh, when he, when we, uh, when I applied that pressure to that Python spirit he was dealing with, the person literally started acting like a snake. He literally started acting like a Python, started hissing, but it was being disobedient. You know, it wasn't leaving that person. So I took a second and I just listened to the Holy Spirit and I, and just kind of listened to God to, to see how he wanted me to go about it. And God gave me a different angle to go about it. So sometimes uh, some demons might be disobedient. And what you got to do is you might have to uh, cast out lesser demons in that person. So God let me know to cast out the lesser demons in that person. So I casted out the lesser demons out of that person. And when you do that, it, it takes away power from the, the stronger demon in them. And so when I went about that, I casted out the lesser demons out of that person. It, it had left them. And then that Python spirit was weakened. And then also, like, the Holy Spirit was just guiding me through this deliverance. And it told me to say, to, to say like, to tell that demon to spit it out. To spit out, like, the, uh, to spit it out, to cough out that, uh, that Python spirit in Jesus' name. So I was like, and I'm like, I'm thinking my head when I'm doing the lyrics, I was like, to say spit it out. But I was like, you know, I just acted on faith. I believed in what God spoke to me. So I, I command that Python spirit to, to come out and to leave and to spit it out in Jesus name. As soon as I said that, uh, the person I was doing the lyrics for, he started coughing it out. He started spitting it out. And I'm like, wow, that's God. Like he literally God and, and the Holy Spirit literally guided me to do that deliverance. So I want to say deliverance could be humbling too, because sometimes, uh, you might try an angle, it is not working, but it's important that we humble ourselves before God and listen to the Holy Spirit to see how we're supposed to go about it. Because God will give you a different angle to go about the deliverance, different ways to attack, and different ways to cast out that devil, to cast out that demon out of that person. Um, so it's important. It's by far one of the most important things that come to deliverance when it comes to casting out a demon is listening to the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit guide you through the deliverance. You know what I'm saying? Um, and literally will tell you the steps or what to do so that person could be free. So that person could be set free. And it's also good to say like Bible verses too, when you're doing deliverance, I'll say like, he who the son shall make free is free indeed. And yes, shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And also I'll be saying like, even though I walk through the shadow of valley of death, I shall fear no evil. I'll speak the word of God over that person's life. Cause we know in the Bible that Jesus preached deliverance when, um, there's people that uh, Jesus preached deliverance. So so when we speak the word of God with people's life, it helps apply that pressure when it comes to doing that deliverance for that person so they could be set free. And Jesus is the one that set them free. So that's just the fourth step. And part actually part of it, too, was the fifth step. I'll say the fifth step I was kind of talking about it was just listening to the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit guide you through the deliverance so that person could be set free. Um, once you do the deliverance and the person saying you kind of you want to you want to check up on the person you want to say how you feeling um making sure how they're doing if the person say they're feeling good they feel like they free they feel like a weight just came off them um a lot of indicators that somebody need, might need deliverance sometimes a lot of people might hear voices and they hear they, they hear like something speaks to them some something demonic speaking to them and stuff like that ask them if they still hearing voices uh ask them how they feel they feel free i would just suggest too to just go back 
to the deliverance apply pressure to that demon you was just dealing with that you was, that you cast it out apply pressure again like two or three times just to make sure there's nothing left in that person that person's 100 percent set free and then once they are feeling good they straight nothing's happening um pray over that person pray for anointed protection over their life pray that that person be filled with the holy spirit because technically when you cast out that demon that person that person house is empty uh sometimes that person house is empty uh or uh, you just pray for that they be filled with the Holy Spirit in their life. So you pray for they be filled with the fire, the Holy Ghost. They be pray, uh, pray for anointed protection on their life, uh, and then uh, and then just pray uh, pray over them. You know what I'm saying? Just pray over them after you're done. Um, also, too, I'll just say uh, it's good to give them a teaching afterwards. Um, I think it's also important when it comes to deliverance. Once that person delivered. Teach them, teach them what it means to walk in obedience. Teach them what it means to walk in Christ. Teach them what it means that um, to to give the devil no place in their life. Don't allow any open doors. And the way a person allow open doors is through disobedience and uh, especially habitual sin. So teaching that person what it means to walk in Christ, you know what I'm saying? Teaching that person how what it means to fight spiritual warfare. Tell them about Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 18. Tell them about how putting on the whole armor of God. Tell them about uh, about how we need to follow Jesus' footsteps. Tell them about how the old person that we was is dead, and now we are new men in Christ, and we need to follow after uh, we need to follow after Jesus' footsteps and living after righteousness, living by the word of God. Um, making sure that they renew their mind daily, that they learn about fasting. All these things it's important to to teach them how to walk in Christ because that's going to help that person stay free and to continue to walk that life that uh we supposed to be living in Christ. So when it comes to uh you know deliverance and just casting out a demon, um it's biblical. You know, I want to talk about too in the Bible how we know it's biblical is because uh let me see. So let's go to uh Matthew Matthew 17 verse 18 so it says jesus rebuked the demon and it can't and this is the amplified version for the bible it says jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the boy was healed at once then the disciples came to jesus privately and asked why could we not drive it out he answered because of your little faith your lack of trust and confidence in the power of god for i assure you and most solemnly say to you if you have living faith the size of a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and if it's if it is the God's will, it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. So uh, and it says also it says verse 21 says, but this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And um, so I, I want to say, too, about that. So it's biblical. Jesus casted out demons out of so many people. Even his apostles did the same acts of when it comes to uh, doing deliverance and casting out demons out of people. So it's, it's biblical. Um, and. When you cast out a demon on a person, when you do this, it's by an act of faith that you believe in God, that you believe in Jesus, that 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 person will be set free, that Jesus is going to set that person free. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's an act of faith. And we know it's an act of faith because in Mark 16, 17, it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. It's based off faith. In my name, in Jesus' name, they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. And, and lay hands on the six and they shall recover so it's an act of faith when you do deliverance when you cast out a demon out of person um uh, so you don't gotta wait for no pastor to tell you what that, that you could cast out devils out of people um uh, it's in the bible it's biblical it's by faith it's by belief in god that we believe we could do something like that and for me it's like i, I don't like when it, it, it makes me so upset seeing people every day wake up dealing with the same demons in their life so it's just like, for me, it's like, I just want to see people be free. I want to see people be filled with joy in their life, the joy of the Holy Ghost. I want to see people be free of the demons they're dealing with. So this is why I just do deliverance and I cast out demons out of people. And I, I, it's all glory to Jesus because, you know, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power that he gave me and he gave you too because he gave us that power to tread on surface of scorpions. You know what I'm saying? So deliverance is, uh, and casting out demons is biblical. You know what I'm saying? So... And also, when you do something like that, it can cause someone to believe in Jesus. Because they like, wow, like a whole demon was just casted out of somebody and someone was delivered thanks to the Lord Jesus setting them free. 
breaking them bondages off their life, breaking them chains off his life. But the Lord Jesus, he uses children. He uses us. And he wants us to follow his footsteps, to follow him, to do the same things that we're supposed to do the same things Jesus did. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Jesus preached repentance. Jesus preached deliverance. Uh, Jesus laid hands on the sick. He also casted out of devils out of people. He cast out demons out of people. So we should do the same thing. And that's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just want to talk about the steps of doing deliverance and how to cast out a demon. Because, you know, so many people dealing with demons in their life. And I want to see people set free. I want to see people know who the Lord Jesus is in their life. And that they, uh, to be filled with the Holy Ghost in their life. And to, for them to be free of anything they're dealing with in their life. So, you know, um, I know a common thing people dealing with maybe be anxiety, fear, anger, maybe depression. There'd be people that might be dealing with the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of uh of a python spirit like a snake spirit they might be dealing with uh like a night terror demon attacking them all the nights uh, all every night uh they might be dealing with um uh, spirit of lust all these things this is it's a spirit behind these things and people need deliverance and it's important as us as the body of christ that we know about at least know how to do deliverance or how to cast out a demon you know what i'm saying um you know what i'm saying Cause it's biblical you know what i'm saying so uh for me personally this is something that i do Cause God, something called me, God called me to do this, and also it's in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? We just do what Jesus did. So if this, if that's what Jesus did. He casted out demons. I was looking like I need to do the same thing. That's just how I look at it personally. You know what I'm saying? But I think for me, um, uh, it brings me so much joy when I do deliverance for people and seeing how God, how Jesus set them free. It brings me joy to see people set free. It's, it brings me joy to see people in joy and happiness. Something, uh, just this great feeling that they ain't never felt before. And it's all thanks to God. So God gets all the glory out of it. Uh, but I just want to make this video talking about how to cast out a demon, how to uh, do deliverance. Uh, if y'all feel blessed by this video, thank Jesus. Get, glory to God, get all the glory to Jesus. Get all the glory to God. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I just, uh, it's important that we just walk in that boldness. You know what I'm saying? The something that's powerful in the Bible too, it says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within us. So we got that power to cast out demons. We got that power to tread on serpents and scorpions. But we got to know this because the only way we can know this if we know the word of God. If we uh, study the word of God and apply the word of God into our, into our hearts and into our life. You know what I'm saying? So it's important that we be bold in these last days. And I'm sick and tired of people going through demons in their life. So that's why I strive to do deliverance for people. And if any of y'all ever need deliverance, y'all can hit me up. Uh, I try to do deliverance on the days where I'm off work. Uh, but yeah, like I said, God gets the glory. I just want to make this video. I felt led by God to make this video to talk about how to cast out demons, how to do deliverance. I pray that Jesus get all the glory. So I love y'all. Y'all stay blessed and encouraged in Jesus' name.